connecting structure, you can organize the pieces in three ways. There's a spirit to the class, there's a sense of trust in the class, and there is interaction in the class. So the spirit, trust, and interaction work together to provide the connectedness of the students to both themselves, each other, and to the professor. And then there's the learning. And this is revised research. And what we did in terms of gathering data on this is we have implemented a revised classroom community survey which he will let you use here at Sam Houston if you ask him. And that survey is where we've been collecting data over several semesters to look at whether students feel a sense of classroom community. We've been doing it face-to-face -face and online learning classes to see if there's a difference in that feeling or sense of community. So there's a better uh, description. Spirit is that feeling of belonging and accepting and friendship. And you wouldn't think this is something you have to work with online, but it is. And this is a critical piece. Trust, they have to feel like they're safe and they can speak openly. And we'll show you ways in which you can build, build that sense of trust. The interaction, believing that closeness and that there's mutual benefit. What does reserve, result when I work, for example, together with somebody else? So many times in our classrooms, you know, we assign group projects and students go, ooh, because a lot of times they think, oh, I could have done a lot better myself than working with someone else. But to provide that structure or that connectedness, we set up both kinds of interaction. We set up individual and we set up group work, right, in the classrooms. So in the learning piece, there's this feeling uh, that the community, that's the classroom, actively constructs meaning and understanding from the content, and that's enhanced. In other words, I learn more because I'm working with other people. I mean, I have to believe that. Otherwise, the whole point of the discussion board is just an assignment that I have to do. But if I really believe, if it's set up right, and I really believe that I'm learning more in this course because I have you and you and you in it, then I have the beginnings of a learning community, a classroom learning community. And so what is our role as a professor? So we have, we have you can organize our tasks in four ways. That's the way we did it here. There's the pedagogical, that's the designing of the content and how we're gonna teach and what we're gonna teach. But there's also the social role. We as a professor have to set up this social interaction. We have to also manage this. We have to, as a manager, manage what students are talking, how they're interacting. We also have to manage their assignments. We have to get prompt, uh, feedback. Uh, there's all kinds of the, of the managing of online in this community. And there's, of course, our technical expertise. There's got to, that's why we're here today, is to learn more in terms of the technical aspect. Okay, I'm going to start with the pedagogical and looking at the designer role. And actually, this is really fun to do because uh, you can get creative and try new things. But uh, you wanted to develop uh, engaging and challenging activities and learning occurs through independent collaborative <coughs> structures. And uh, since I've been doing this for a long time, 12 years, <laughs> uh, I found that the more I can get uh, my students engaged with each other and also with the topic, the better they did as far as their tests, the better they did with learning the content, and my reviews for the course were better. If it was just straight, here, read this, do the discussion, answer these questions, I was thinking I was doing my job and I wasn't because the scores wouldn't be very, very good and they didn't enjoy the course that much. It was like, I just want to get through this, it's an online course, I can do this at four in the morning, and that was the attitude that I was getting. Uh, this is an example of how um, I work with uh, wikis to develop a, uh, some collaboration amongst the students. They had a book they were supposed to read. Instead of all of them just reading the book and then getting back with us, uh, maybe on a discussion board and <coughs> some comments, I set up a wiki and I said, you are to design this and be as creative as you can and make it interesting for others to read. So uh, out of the 20 chapters in this textbook, we assigned like four or five groups. 
and uh, four or five people, three or four people would get together and they would be responsible for giving the best uh, presentation on those chapters they could. And they had to have some questions that would entice the readers from the other groups to engage in the conversation. So we have, uh, for instance, on the left-hand side of the page, or right-hand side of the page, it tells the chapters that are there and what they had to do. If you scroll down, let me scroll down. Oh, this is just a picture. This is what it looks like on Blackboard. And I took this from a Blackboard uh, series that we had before. Oops, where did it go? Here we go. That's another example. Okay, this is another example. Okay, that, well, that, that was a, uh, where we went to Blackboard, and that was uh, before our new, new one. But I had like uh, seven different groups, and I gave the students examples of wikis that they that other students had done before. And I took examples where they used multiple types of, um, of um, ways to present. For instance, here's one. Okay. We scroll up. Okay, this is the the page that you saw before. It was just a JPEG, and then. Not moving. <laughs> they were flashing before. Okay, uh, they had these hyperlinks just so you could go further further in, and each student had, was responsible for one part of, of the work. Uh, for instance, this was about developmental supervision, and this particular student drew a nice chart to explain it. And then when you click down here in chapter seven, there's more. Yes, and. They wrote the particular parts about what was happening and what, what the case study would be about for supervision, and they explained that. So that, in other words, they made some case studies that the other students would have to respond to in helping with their reading. And then they gave some resources. Okay, so that's another, where are we at? No, we're still on Lady Gaga. Okay. <coughs> We're sorry, we're trying to hyperlink to examples. We're praying that all this works. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, next slide. Okay, so um, basically we believe that you should provide a variety of instructional strategies for your d diverse learners, and this is one example. Okay, and this, uh, we're gonna go and uh, click on that. Uh, for every one of our courses, we try to introduce uh, the course but one of the advantages to being able to use Blackboard and post all these things is that you know that you have students, some students are auditory. They're gonna to wanna to download something onto their iPhone, they're gonna to wanna to listen to it in the car. Mm -hmm. Other students are visual, they wanna see something. They wanna, it's just like in this face-to-face class. So yeah, here's they're just- They're gonna to wanna to have a, or something organized in front of them. So here's a couple of examples of what- the ASC 662, the practicum or the internship, and the last class you are obtaining your principal certification. This is Dr. Julie Combs, the coordinator of principal internships at Sam Houston. My role is to- So then she, and then she, you she know, goes into all her, of that. Yeah, just introduces herself. Here's an example of. Welcome to ASE 694 Instructional Leadership Development. The purpose of the course is. Okay, just as well. <laughs> but, uh, but that's if you wanted to have an auditory with the visual. So and we try that. Um, um, uh, Luana and I uh, didn't co teach, but we put both of ourselves in the same courses that we're teaching same different sections so that we could uh, piggyback off of each other we think that's real beneficial in fact almost all of our online courses we try to put one other professor in there either as a mentor or as a or somebody who's learning uh, whenever we get somebody new we stick them in an online class so they can facilitate uh, we also know that the pedagogical role requires felicity uh, facilitating and of course that can be it has to do with how well you design the discussions so for example we try to make sure that when we put up a thread in the discussion that it's real clear what it is that you expect students to do so we uh, there's a rubric and you design that rubric and you say write two or three things and we usually say things like make a connection to the text and we'll even say things like and you will respond to three or four people I'm sure you all do the same saying similar things. 
Here's another example of, I believe that you also need to provide feedback. And I got this idea from another professor who said, you know, every week I summarize my, uh, the blackboard discussion. I go, you do? And they go, yeah. I just put it up there in the announcements and I write a brief discuss discussion about what I, what I saw. Because sometimes professors get into the discussion board and make comments, and sometimes they don't, depending on the topic. And so this is a way to recap. So this is an example of, this is our first Blackboard discussion, just a little quick feedback that went into announcements. And then uh, we're not gonna go over these, but we include them in your PowerPoint just because we thought this was pretty good research. This guy, Will Coxon, does a lot of work with uh, online learning. Okay. Now we're gonna go to social, and this is the next uh, part, uh, establishing a climate of respect and trust, and we talked about that a little bit earlier. Uh, one way of doing it is making it fun, but also setting the rules of what, what's safe and academically and, and uh, socially what's acceptable to be put online. And uh, facilitating cohesiveness of the groups. And again, back to the wikis, uh, I was able to check on that everybody was, was uh, participating and uh, the students liked that idea that we were all able to access each other's wikis and work on them. And, and then you can edit them. Uh, so that, that helped with creating some group response. Um, and again, we were, the whole idea is to build a culture of acceptance in all the class, with all the class members. One of the things that we did was, uh, here we have introductions to each student. So here's just an example of um, how you might, enter, I, I asked the students to introduce yourself to the class, say a few things at first. This is about a week before the class starts. If you can get your students involved in, in something right away, then and you can get as much of the social work up front, you're taking less away from your course time. So that's when I start, that's why I always panic when somebody says, well, we don't know what that online class is gonna make, I'm just panicking, hoping it'll make, because I'm gonna start a week early, as close as I can get to a week early. But anyway, this is just an example of some social interaction. I just wanted to show you how the student introduces themselves very briefly. I just wrote a little note back that says, you know, I'm looking forward to something. And then the students start engaging, like nice meeting you, Angelica. You know, I have been, I admire anybody who can teach seventh graders. So there's the beginning of the connection between students to students. Then you see somebody else coming back and say, hey, how are those schools in Katy? In other words, now they're identifying with where that person teaches. Of course, our people are all educators and they're, just, they're already teaching in the classroom. Uh, and then this, the notice that she replied, <laughs> she's saying, okay, here's my schools and here's what they're like in Katy. So it's just the, and something you can do with these discussions is you can make it like, and if it's an entry, you can have them also attach a picture themselves and if they don't want to have a picture of themselves, then they uh, pick an avatar, avatar for it. Uh, I've also had them before just do a podcast, so it's kind of their introduction to themselves and it's auditory, so that would work out great. The other thing that I've had in classes is called, uh, it's, a, it's supposed to be a student lounge, and I said, well, I'm imagining them with their cup of coffee or tea or their Coke and their they're on the lounge and they're asking each other questions and I thought, well, let's call it the Z-Bucks Coffee House. So I took the Starbucks logo and I just put the Z in front of it. But uh, they like that. We know that we're idea. already going to prison. We know. Yeah, yeah, the librarians are going to like library. Library. <laughs> 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 uh, We broke the rules. I hear the alarm. Okay. But it, was, it, it turned out to be a good way for, it was a safe environment where they could uh, ask each other questions, say, can you believe Zellner asked us to do this? assignment or whatever, but uh, it was fun, and it turned out pretty good. Okay, and of course there are all these managerial problems that you're just going to have to learn to work through uh, ahead of time, but we know that the earlier you can get your timeline, your procedural rules for turning things in, how you want them to label the documents, even when they upload them to Gradebook or however you're going to have them uh, upload them, is important. So knowing that if you want their name 
in the file when they save it, that's important to say so. If not, they're going to turn it in and they name it whatever they think it's supposed to be named and it won't make much sense to you. So guidelines for group discussions, we talked about post announcements, we're really big on announcements. But also how you have everything labeled for turn in so that they're last, I always have the students uh, put their last name in, the course number and the semester, and the assignment I have a little a hieroglyphic or whatever to use for it. Then I can tell who's done what and uh, we don't lose anything from that. Uh, I also give a test on the syllabus, like we give quizzes for different things. I always give a quiz on the syllabus just so that they will go through and read everything they can to say, I don't remember this. They've read it, you know, it depends on their score, but that seems to be. So uh, we have some examples of uh, audio announcements before class starts. Uh, professor maintains accessibility. Uh, we, do you do a virtual office? I know some people do. So we started uh, trying to do more of uh, virtual office. Uh, we have like a little office hours with chat. Do you use to do that? And then the lecture hall for virtual classroom. We find that is really important. And then some people, like we said, because there's all these different learning styles, you've got some people that they are there and there all the time, and then there are other people that go, where, what virtual office? And they'd rather just text you. And I've never seen so many texts that now come, well, I give my cell number so I can get all that, but. She has a nice bill for it too. Um, uh, one thing I wanted to say is I, I use Skype and iChat, iChat I love, and I guess there's some others out there too that uh, the students kind of like that. Right. But even the, the even what I call the old-fashioned one, the one that's online uh, it, it, put through Blackboard, you know, our virtual, I, it, as long as you can limit it. Like, so here's what I usually do. I'll say things like, okay, uh, the let's say you have 20 students and you split them into groups or you split them into alphabet, however you want to organize them so that you're only dealing with five or six in a lecture hall at one time. And because I found that that uh, I am just drove me nuts with, uh, with just having 20 people in there at one time. So if you say, okay, I'm gonna be online between one and two o'clock, uh, feel free to come on in and let's chat. You'll know, have students coming on and online and there'll be, uh, there'll be too many of them. So I think we need to organize it a little bit, so. And I usually do a sign up, I'll say, because there are some students who are free in the day. I don't know how, because they're all teachers, but you know, they're free. And then there are some that are only free in the evening. And then, of course, uh, we believe that you ought to add just as much of the humor. Watching of the ILT show. So great to see so many of you here. In this module, we will be setting our ground rules, introduce ourselves, and learn more about the Texas Education Agency's vision for Texas schools. This is the first of six learning modules, which includes a PowerPoint. We do use extra normal, uh, and so it's not just us no, talking. But I never tell them that. I never. They, they don't know, and they don't expect. They don't know it's gonna, when it's going to be, or if it's going to be extra normal, or if it's going to be a headshot with uh, the instructor telling them something. But uh, they so, like that. Then there's the technical role. Yes, is Whoopi and Lady Gaga are they part of the pay plan? Yeah, yeah. they're free. They're all, all free. free. Yeah, you go in and. Right. Uh, that's a good question. Good. Yeah. Uh, you, when you sign up, you say you're an educator, and we want the education rate, which is zero. And then you just have to remember when you hit the 5,000 point marks, that's, they have 5,000 points that, that you use up to get your characters and create your films. And we did it as a department. Yeah, we did it as a department, so anybody in the department can use the same um, letters, or, or I mean, the same email and same login. And then we can see what other people have submitted to get some ideas. I mean, it's, it's like we're helping each other in the department. So all of our videos are on. And also, we talked about it. Well, we'll pilot it and see how much we like it before we just invest money from the department in something. And that was a way of keeping track of, OK, how much are we going to use extra normal and how much, you know. But you can keep it forever. It looks like they haven't changed the rules yet. So uh, I keep uh, getting 5,000 more, you know, when I get a little bit low. And uh, it's a good. But again, I don't use it for everything. We don't use it for everything. Right, because you don't want to overdo anything or else then you're back to the fact that anything unique and unusual doesn't, isn't. Uh, this is an example of uh, some procedures that we have up front uh, that have to do with the technology. And we find that this is critical. 
don't tell them that they have to have high speed connections, that they're, they're not gonna, you know, they're gonna think that they can just use their little um, uh, old computer down the hall and they're gonna be able to access all the movies that we put, we put a lot of integrity up, uh, we put, uh, we have videos that we have copyright permission to have and all of those for the you know, quick time. So notice that there's directions for media player and you know all the things that they would need to add, download before they start, uh, start working in a module. So there's just some examples. Okay, we need to hurry. So in summary, and you're gonna, you have a lot more information in terms of uh, extra resources and things, but you want to have, uh, with knowledge and, uh, generation, you want to have it actively engaged, you want to engage all your students and so on quite content on a content level so it doesn't get boring. And you seek out uh, additional resources, but you don't have to do all that. I always have the students seek out some things uh, to be used in the class and be part of the creation process. Um, Collaboration, we work together to solve problems and complete activities and communicate with class members very well. That seems to help a lot. And, okay, and then um, just getting students to help them learn to manage their own time. That's why we think uh, online learning is very beneficial. And just like our our, our uh, opening speaker said, he said, I wasn't very organized with paper and pencil, but I got real organized when it came to electronic documents. And so even giving hints to them and, and sharing hints about how they keep things in folders and what, how they label their folders and, and all of this, uh, we think, helps. Um, we believe that this is what com classroom community students that are member of community really need. They need those relevant postings uh, to keep them all updated. They, we think they need not only the modules on the left-hand side in the course description, but they need announcements like module two coming up between April the 12th and April the 15th, da, da, da. You know, so we do twice. Um, but what, one nice thing about the new Blackboard program is that they're gonna have it so you can use um, different uh, in, uh, technology. I mean, you can use your iPad, your iPhone, your uh, smartphone uh, and uh, your computer to to link uh, announcements. They can all go out at the same time. I like that. That's something we haven't had. Right. And of course, we know that they need lots of compassion and tolerance. And because of that asynchronous, in, asynchronous nature of online learning, a student whose message expresses insecurity, it may go unheard of if you don't log on regularly and deal with those emotional uh, issues right away. Um, and then we know that we have, sometimes have to have a conversation about how to treat each other. That needs to come up every once in a while, even in our doctoral classes. Uh, and so in summary, what's required, you create a community. That's, that's it in a nutshell. You have to build the community. It doesn't form itself. You have to make sure everybody understands why the community is important, that they're going to learn more than they would have if they didn't have a community, and that full participation in building and maintaining the community, that's responsibility of everybody and we're doing it in different ways. And that we all have different ways of negotiating uh, paths to reach our goals. And so in conclusion, we know that, like when I first started teaching, the concept of online learning was based on Blackboard. <laughs> I mean, it, that was what we were left with. That was our tool. Uh, we had discussion, interaction, that was it. I mean, read a chapter, discuss. We had collaborative groups, but they were still formed using Blackboard. But since 2009, and our speaker talked about that, students have became more engaged in just-in-time interaction. They don't want to wait till they get to their computer. They want to be able to use whatever tools they can. So knowing that doc sharing, social networking, all of those pieces are gonna soon come into play, then the question becomes, with all these different devices, how are we gonna learn to deal with that? And we haven't quite figured that out. We were hoping we'd have time to ask you what you're doing, but we're looking at our time and we don't. But we wanna thank you very much for coming and please share with us. Um, we've got on our, um, 
PowerPoint that's uploaded, we have our email, and we'd love to keep in touch and share ideas. Thank you so much for coming.